Thanks very much, guys. Uh, today, I'm just going to give you an overview of Colpeo Minerals and uh, the three projects that we've got in Chile. So we're a copper-focused company. We're focused on Chile. It's a pretty simple story. Uh, obviously, we like copper. We like Chile. We like the coastal belt of Chile. Um, rather than up in the mountains. We see a lot of opportunity in the coastal belt for medium size, sort of better grade copper deposits. We've um, been listed on the ASX for about 12 months. Recently uh, got approval to uh, be on the OTC as well. Uh, we have three projects in Chile. Uh, our flagship project's uh, Lana Carina, where we've had... Um, quite a bit of recent success there with some, um, you know, some nice wide high grade copper uh, molly intersections from the phase one drilling program. Uh, that's the Lana Carina project there, about 300 kilometres north of Santiago. Uh, 40 k south of there is our other project, Quellon, which is um, prospective for IOCG and Manto style copper deposits. And we also have a project further north, about 700 kilometres north of uh, Santiago, Las Patacas, which is about 15 kilometres south of uh, Candelaria. So that's very prospective for IOCGs, obviously. Uh, as I mentioned, we like the coastal belt, lots of infrastructure, low altitude, workforce readily available. Um, our management are also involved in Tesoro Resources, which have had... Uh, some recent success in Chile. They've discovered a million ounce gold deposit further to the north. So we do have quite a bit of um, Chilean experience on the board. Uh, phase two drilling program just started. So we expect to be able to uh, release a lot of information on our, on our drilling. We have uh, updated the market recently on how that's going. Expect assay results in um, three to six weeks. Um, just a quick overview of the company, market capitalisation at the moment of uh, about 7 million Australian dollars, share price 12 cents. We have just raised an additional 2 million dollars uh, on, a, on, a, on a share issue and also a rights issue, so that's underway and that's going quite well. So we're reasonably financed to um, complete the phase two drilling program at Lana Carina and probably also go down to Quellon uh, and do a bit of drilling down there. Um, just a quick snapshot of the board, obviously myself here, Managing Director. As I mentioned, two of our directors are involved in Tesoro, uh, who are also uh, in Chile. Uh, mining Engineer Paul Smide and uh, Joint Company Secretaries uh, Shannon and Sarah. Uh, I suppose just to give a, a sort of a reason to invest in Colpeo Minerals, uh, as I mentioned, we're exploring the coastal belt, looking for high-grade, medium-sized ore bodies, um, either uh, porphyry-style or IOCG-style. Uh, management with a reasonable track record in Chile. Uh, location in that coastal belt, located in Chile, the number one copper producer. And obviously, um, as everyone's been mentioning over the last couple of hours, a lot of upside there for copper as far as we're concerned. I'm not going to go through all this, but I think we've heard enough people uh, talk about copper. Copper's looking good. I'm probably being conservative with some of my estimates. I think I heard this morning 50 million tonne by 2050. So I, I, I'm pretty confident copper price is going back up. Uh, and also, obviously, Chile. Chile's the number one copper producer. We like Chile. We're an Australian company, but we think that the assets that we've got our hands on in Chile uh, are better than anything that we could probably get in Australia um, for, the, you know, for the cost of earning into these projects. A lot of um, recent sort of publicity on Chile with the, with the change of government. Some positive news coming out with the... Um, with the new constitution not being approved by the general public. And what we're seeing now out of Chile is the government have uh, started to um, announce some tax incentives for new mining projects. So I think Chile's sort of turned the corner there and is looking quite positive. For, with respect to Lana Carina, as I mentioned, um, some significant drill results from the phase one drilling program. Lana Carina 
was historically mined. They mined about one, one to two million tonnes of high grade from open cut and some shallow underground mining. What they exploited with that mining was the outcropping breccia pipe. So the, the system at Lana Carina is telescoped from surface where the breccia pipes outcrop through what is a porphyry rock. It's porphyritic, it hosts chalcopyrite, but it doesn't really host it in veins as you would normally expect within a porphyry. It's more disseminated style in the actual porphyry itself. It's a porphyry rock, but probably not a true porphyry deposit. Underneath that, what we're starting to see in some of the deeper drilling is this uh, silica cupola, which hosts the high-grade molybdenum mineralisation that we see at depth. We've seen up to 1,500 ppm moly in that zone. We're interpreting a, a deeper porphyry below that, but we haven't done that deep drilling yet. There's some uh, visuals there on the, on the sorts of mineralisation we're seeing in the core. So in the porphyry rock, we see this very coarse-grained uh, infill chalcopyrite, disseminated chalcopyrite. We also see the chalcopyrite as the matrix within the breccia, which outcrops. And then deeper in the system, we start to see copper associated with um, potassium alteration and then that's the sort of stuff we, we see in that uh, cupola further deeper in the system. Very high grade molybdenum in that area. The interesting thing with the mineralisation at Lana Carina, it's the alteration is mainly phyllic in what we've seen near the surface. It's magnetite destruct destructive. So one of the exploration criteria we're using going forward is looking for areas where we're seeing magnetic lows rather than magnetic highs. And we did have, well, I'll go next slide, we'll, I'll show you the plan view. We've got a series of these um, magnetic lows that have never been drilled around the main Lana Carina mineralised area. So we've started to test some of those in the phase one drilling program. And one of the holes, hole five, did drill into a buried breccia pipe and then extended down into that porphyry-hosted mineralisation at depth. So we're encouraged by that. We're encouraged by the fact that that exploration model does seem to be working. You can see the uh, example of that breccia-style mineralisation there. So in the plan view, we've done a detailed um, ground magnetic survey, and this is the area here where we, where we did the phase one drilling program, where the known breccia pipes are. In the T3 area is where we've discovered that fourth breccia. And what we're doing in the, in the, in the phase two drilling program is, is chipping away at testing these other mag lows. We released to the market yesterday the results of drilling in the T10 area. Now that's come back with visible sulphide mineralisation over about 170 metres in an area where a historic hole deeper in the system and hit um, 200 metres at 0.4% copper. So not as high grade as those massive intersections we were getting out of the main Lana Carina zone, but what it does show is that these, um, these other magnetic low targets are you know, potentially mineralised. When we realised that the, the mag lows were where we should be targeting, we've done a, a, a quite a detailed surface mapping program, and even though that's not all outcrop, where we have gone into the areas and had a look closely at those magnetic lows, we are seeing some oxide copper mineralisation outcropping on the surface. We're also seeing breccias as well. So that's giving us encouragement that that exploration model is, is reasonably robust. Our second project, as I mentioned, Quellon's about 40 kilometres south of um, Lana Carina. This project is, is more of your IOCG slash Manto style mineralisation. There has been no drilling at Quellon. It's, um, there's mineralisation over 10 kilometres of strike, a lot of artisanal mining, but no historic drilling. So what we, in, we in, inherited some geophysical information, some IP data. We've gone back in and infilled on those IP lines and we've got a reasonable geophysical anomaly there. 
We have also gone in and, and completed surface mapping and sampling over the top of that anomaly and we're seeing outcropping copper mineralisation. So it's never been drilled. The main uh, feature in the IP anomaly starts at about 100 metres below the surface. So all going well, we should be down there by the end of the year, early next year, maybe three short holes into that anomaly to test that area. And the last project I want to talk about is Las Patacas. So that's located further to the north. It's about 700 kilometres north of um, Santiago, 15 kilometres south of um, the Candelaria IOCG deposit. It's in the same structural setting as um, Candelaria. Candelaria sits within the Atacama Fault Zone. Same rock types, except we're higher up in the stratigraphy. Candelaria is hosted within the... Um, Volcanoclastics um, in, in where that deposit is. The volcanic clastics at Patakas are probably deeper, so they don't outcrop the volcanics. What we've seen is mineralisation over about a six kilometre long strike uh, and several sort of centres to that mineralisation. We have completed a bit of drilling there and we're hitting reasonable grades, but probably not the widths that we like. So what we've done is we've gone back there and we've carried out some uh, ground mag surveys and we've located a couple of um, pretty interesting um, ground mag anomalies in the southern part of the um, exploration tenement, suggesting that maybe below that outcropping mineralisation that we do see on surface, we might be looking at, at a buried IOCG. So we hope to get back there by probably 2023, sometime in 2023, to, um, to drill that as well. So just a snapshot of what people can expect from uh, news flow. Phase two drilling program underway at Lana Carina. The first uh, hole is at the laboratory, so we should have results in um, three to four weeks. If, if this phase two drilling program grows well, we'll move straight into the phase three go down to Quellon at the end of the year or early next year, drill that uh, coincident geophysical, geochemical anomaly. If that comes back good, obviously we'll continue drilling there. And then in, also in 2023, testing those um, additional targets at Las Patacas. Thank you. <laughs>